And I guess it could be born if, if, if you're not born again. Amen. And I, you know, I said it like this a lot of times. If you get the fire, you build a fire, come people on. will come. <laughs> the wise truck don't get, don't, don't get much tension riding down the road. But the fire truck do. Yeah. Everybody wants to go see where the fire is. Yeah. Yeah. So what the church needs to do is get a fire going. Come on. Yeah. Folks will come. Get that old Holy Ghost fire burning. Get your soul back on the fire. You know, once you get to burning, you're burning. And, and a fire gets uncontrollable. If the wood's right. I mean, as you go out, you're going you, you, to have a fireplace or build a fire. You just don't go out and just grab wood because it's wood. You got to get it. That old heater, the wire heater is heavy. It sticks there. But that old tin heater, he get to dance. That, that might be red hot. He'd be red hot. That might be backing up from me. Praise God. He'd be dancing, wouldn't he? That's what we need to get, get red hot. Amen. Let him old heater and get to dancing. For the Lord. Amen. But I'll tell you what, we sometimes it's, it's it's hard to get a fire going when the wood's wet. When the wood ain't right. But I'll tell you what, it's easy to get going. Praise God if you got the right kind of wood. You know, move of God will come when people's hearts are right. When people are seeking God, when people are hungry for God. More than they are. You know, one thing about the Bible tells us, God's a jealous God. We all know what jealousy is. We probably all taste a little bit of it. Amen. In the natural. Amen. 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 Not, not all of us, okay. <laughs> we probably all taste it, what jealousy is. Yeah, Amen. Right. And just because he's God don't mean it's any different. Come on, come on. Y'all hear me? Yes, amen. I know we're speaking on spiritual terms, but jealous is jealous. In the Bible, when he wrote that, he's writing to he was writing to human beings. This Bible is written to folks, people. His creation. And what he said about it, he said, God is a jealous God. Right. Yes. And he said. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Come on, man. Right. Come on. That's right. Don't put nothing before me. I'm jealous. <laughs> I don't want you to put more attention on something else than me. I am jealous. Yeah. Now that's strong. That'll make you think. And knows we need God. After everything has failed, after the lawyers have failed, after judges has failed, after uh, the doctors have failed, you need God. Yeah. You need Him before, but you really need Him when all the things you're holding on to, knowing it ain't going to carry you through, knowing that it's going to be God if you make it, but yet we hold on to things and we try to make it work. Come on now, come on. And if something works, then we give man the praise. But it was God all the while. He holds the key. He holds our breath. Amen. So he says, I shall have no other God before. Well, that was in the Old Testament. Well, it's all the Bible. But Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. I come to fulfill it. Yes, amen. And when you get through, God is still a jealous God. That's what I'm talking about. I shall have no other God before. You know, that's what makes you difference when people see you following God. They see you obeying the word. What makes us a light? Just because we got our name on the church roll? That don't make you a light. A light's got something burning from within. Come on, brother. That, that glass on the outside.
outside that light of that cell, it's not burning, but on up in there. Right. Even beyond the, the, the globe of the fluorescent light, inside. Right. Come on now, come on. Deep down inside is where the light comes from. Hey. Amen. Amen. And that strength comes down from that line through us. Wires. It comes from God. Yes. Praise God. But we don't have to have a line. See, we're born again. And we got that new life in us. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So what makes us a shining light is because something is in us greater than what's around us. Amen. And that's what God wants us to be. Something in us greater, more desirable, more compassion and love than anything around us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He said the whole be quiet, boy. Hush. Don't talk out in church. Don't talk to us. Amen. 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 So at all the end of it is God is a jealous God. Yeah. Amen. 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 You have to teach them. They just don't know. He ain't raised in church, so that's why I'm raising. Amen. Praise God. church. You know, you, you, can't let, you can't love them so much you let them do what they want. Because when you get old, they'll be in the jailhouse. Come on. Or in the graveyard. You have to teach them and discipline them while they're little. And it ain't beautiful. It ain't beautiful. It may be because you love them, but it, it's not right before God. He said, raise them up, didn't he? The way you have them to go. They get old. They'll remember they won't depart from it. Right. It ain't mean to teach the children right, folks. Right. It ain't mean to teach the children right. Praise right. God. They won't know unless you do teach them. That's right. When somebody else tells them, they won't understand. That's right. Because it starts from you. Amen. You have to teach them. Amen. Can you say amen. that? Amen. You have to tell them right from wrong. Don't they'll never know it because they ain't going to take it from nobody else. They'll think somebody else is just trying to run over. But see, when it comes to mama, it comes from daddy or grandparents, then they know this is the right thing. Amen. When they get out there, they'll know. They won't be facing the world that thinks everything's centered on them when the world don't care about you. That's right. That's right. You may get, around, get away with it around the house, but you get out there, you got to face the, face the bullet. Right. Hey Amen. The world ain't going to give over to you. they got to be prepared for what's out there. Amen. 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 So we'll get back to it. God is a jealous God. Amen. How many can say amen? amen. amen. And that's just the way it is. We've all tasted of it and sure. Praise God of what jealousy really is. So that's jealous. I don't have to explain no farther than that part. Yeah. You know what jealousy is. Come on, man. You want that attention and you think it's going somewhere else. Right. Well, that's what I'm talking about with God. Yeah. God wants your attention. Amen. He wants yeah. you to talk with him. He wants you to get somewhere yeah. where there's nobody but you and him yeah. and say, Lord, I just want to spend some time with you. Yeah. I want to talk to you about some time. Can we do God like that? You better believe we can. You better believe that we can. Amen. Just like you get your best friend or someone you trust and you say, I need to talk to you. You, you, you feel that trust. You feel you can just build it out. Let it all out and he ain't going to tell nobody. Or she ain't going to tell nobody. Which we know that's rare. That's really rare. It shouldn't be rare. But when we get back where we need to be in God, it won't be right. See, we lose so much. When you get away from God, like America has got away from God, like the church as a whole has departed from God. But when we get back, all these things that has departed from us that only comes with obedience to God 
It'll come back to us. And that's what this nation has lost. It's its core values. Come on now. It's core values. Just just back some of you coming up, look at now how things are so different. Look at how they, the schools and the things around you, what they're teaching and what they're allowing and what they're commanding yeah. you to you to believe this. Right. I mean, it takes a wicked leadership to demand you to believe something against God's word. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. And they've done it before. They made their own laws, but where are they now? God's still on the throne, right. and they. In hell, oh, yes. in everlasting destruction, all those that rose up, king, leader, president, whoever he was, that rose up and tried to lead people away from what this nation was established on was the word of God. Yes. They didn't last. Man. Man don't last forever, but God is forever. Yeah. Not on earth in the physical. Now when you're born again, you'll last forever. You'll live forever. Yes. Not last forever. You'll live forever. Come on. Because you're born again. Yeah. But every king, every Nebuchadnezzar, every Hitler, every Napoleon, all these antichrists that rose up and, and, and thought they were God, thought they had so much power, thought they had gained the hearts of people to the point that God couldn't stop them. Well, it sort of sounds like uh, when the, the people said, God can't sink the Titanic. We finally come up with something that God can't do nothing with. I want you to know, man can't come up with something that God can't stop, that God can't turn around, that God can't change. But that's what we're dealing with right now in Washington, D.C. Come on, that's right. And I know Brother Castle, he knows it. And that's a lot of things we don't know he ain't allowed to talk about. But I know in the spirit. And I know what the Bible says. And I know this book is way out ahead of us all. <laughs> I said this Bible is way out ahead of us all. And this is the greatest history book. That was ever written. Praise God. You know what? It'll keep you. It'll keep you lined up. And most of all, it'll keep you ready. That when, when it falls and it will fall. When man has an answer to God, and man has always had an answer to God. See, when it's over, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna answer to the government. We're gonna answer to God. We're gonna answer to the one that the government's on his shoulders. Jesus. He said that in the book of Isaiah, he said, His name shall be called Wonderful. Cancel that. The mighty God. The everlasting Father. And the Prince of Peace. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. He's in control. He's on the throne. He rules today. And nothing can be done. Hallelujah. Unless he gives the go ahead. That is the God that we serve today. We can lift our head up in a dark hour. We can lift our head up when it looks like the nation is crumbling. See, we are people, our people, and we're not citizens of this country. We're citizens of another country. We're born to the Spirit. Praise God. This whole world is not our home. Heaven is our home. We're just passing through. We're going to get so low and sad to the point. There's no hope. There is hope. Yes, evil is going to be punished. Evil's coming to an end. It's in the Bible. The Antichrist, we can see his spirit. We can see him in the White House. We can see him in the state houses. We can see him in the city houses. But this Antichrist will only last for a season. He ain't going to live forever. Jesus is going to live forever. We're going to live with him. Come on. But the Antichrist ain't going to be there. The Antichrist.
Christ and all of his followers will be in that lake of fire that burneth forever and ever. But see, they don't even know that. They're in darkness and the devil is using them. To plot. They're actually trying to plot and find a way to get rid of this. They're coming in from every side and even up uh, one of the states. I know that South Dakota, because South Dakota's got a good governor. She's a tough lady. There might be North Dakota. One of them, but anyhow, they're banning the old King James. They're not banning them revised. Yeah. <laughs> See, the devil, devil knows what is a threat to him. He knows if somebody will pray and fast and seek God and open this book, God's going to use it. God's going to anoint it. And this word of God's going to stand up against the kingdom of Satan. It's going to stand up and bring down this evil perversion. He said the weapons of our warfare are not common. But mighty through God yeah. of the pulling down of strongholds. See, praying, fasting, and preaching this word will bring down and pull down the strongholds of Satan, not only in your life personally, but it'll bring it down in the nation. It'll bring it down in the government. Hallelujah. Thank God it's not carnal. Our warfare is not with weapons, tanks, and, and guns, and computers, but our, the, ours is the power of God. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the power of the Word. That it's mighty through God. It's mighty through God. God don't need a gun. He's got angels with flaming swords. That we've read in the Bible how that God sent out his angels and Israel would, wouldn't have to sling a sword. God would bring their enemies to know. And you know all this is written for our admonition. It's written for us to believe in the same God. That our enemies, that the enemies is against our children. The enemies against our nation, against our schools. Against our sovereignty. Trying to open up our nation and our borders and allow our enemies to walk in freely to put them in key positions. So when the time comes, you know, things can set up for God to get the glory. The devil can set things up and God in the end gets the glory. Yes. I said, the devil can set things up, but he will pray. He said, and my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and, and turn from your wicked ways. See, if you, if my people, which are called by my name, first, if you'll humble yourself and pray and seek his face, you will see your wicked ways. <laughs> You'll see where you got away from God. You'll see when you get down in God's presence, the presence of God will begin to reveal to you where you've slipped. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I know I have. If I'm the only one, the rest of y'all pray for me. But all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the day is a day of salvation. The day is a day if you want to hear my voice and come back like the prodigal son. Yes. Rise out the hog pen yes. and say, I'm going home. I'm going back to the Father's house. 
Peter said it's best not to have known the way right. of righteousness. To know it and to turn from it. I guess this old world now has the strongest pull that it's ever had in all of man's creation. I believe it's worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. I believe it's worse than it was in the days of Noah. Man has, has got more sophisticated ways to do wrong. You know, the Bible spoke about men would be inventors, inventors of evil things. Inventors of evil things. Amen. Amen. Inventors of evil things. We've got that going on in our generation. A generation of Sodom and Gomorrah. Every evil aspect can be drawn out of the pits of evil has been drawn out and spread over this creation. Every evil, you know he said every imagination of man's mind. You think when your imaginations have totally been possessed by demons and demons are doing your thinking, demons are controlling your thoughts. And once demon spirits begin to control your thoughts, control your mind, they begin to control your actions. You begin to venture out in the things that at first you said, oh no. But somehow those convincing spirits, those deceiving you know, the first thing when Jesus, the 24th chapter of Matthew, when they said, Lord, the disciples said, Lord, what shall be the sign of the coming and the end of the world? They were already then concerned because Jesus had taught them this whole world wouldn't last forever. And they was concerned, Lord, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? First thing Jesus said, and oh, we got so much of it in this day and time. He said, you take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name Saying I'm Christ. Yes. And shall do what? Deceive. See, if he hadn't have said that, I'd have to leave it right there, but he didn't leave it there, so I can't, I'm not going to leave it there. They shall deceive, not just some little old something, but many. Many in the pulpits, many with big TV programs that's holding back. I'm not preaching the full council, the whole council of God. I'm not preaching the truth of the gospel. Many shall come in my name, he said. They shall deceive me and be wars and rumors of wars, troubles, earthquakes. I believe it was in 70, it might have been 70. I got wrote down somewhere. I believe it was in 70. I believe it was other Bible before him. Might have been 71. There was, in a year, there was one earthquake. Today, there's thousands every day. This old world is trembling. It's, it's, it's become so normal until they don't even mention it unless it's above a, a certain magnitude. Thousands. From 70 right on up to, to, to in the 90s or 2000, it had come up to, to like, like thousands. That's why he said this would be a sign. Yes. The earthquakes in diverse places, different places. Yeah. He went on to say, when you see these signs, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. He said, the good men of the house would have known what hour to thief. 
If you knew a thief was coming come on, come to steal on. the tires off your car at 2 o'clock, you wouldn't be asleep. <laughs> I mean, you may not set him up, but you, you at least be watching to, to make sure. Amen. And a lot of people knew it. They probably wouldn't, the hands probably wouldn't be empty. Come on. But he said the good news of the house would have known what the hour the thief would come. He went out allowed his house. To be broke. For in searching out. That you think not. The son of man. Will come. At the very most. Time of your life. You think well. He ain't going to come now. This has got to happen. That's got to happen. Well I, I, the scriptures puts it like this. And Jesus said. If the days are not shortened, said there be no flesh saved. Yeah. In other words, the world comes so evil until there be nobody saved, nobody left to come after if he didn't shorten the days. But he said, for the very elect sake, yeah. I will shorten the days. Yeah. So that means that means it won't be as long as it was original in God's will. That means that it'd be shortened if I don't shorten it. If I don't take some of the time away, there'll be no flesh saved. But he said for the very elect's sake, said the reason I'm doing this will be for you, your sake. Well, you won't have to face a greater evil. We can all see right now the evil we're facing. Look what our kids are facing. Look what the government's demanding. Look what they're paying for. Look at all the evil. Look at what they're doing. Look how the FBI, the CIA, and the Secret Service, and all these, look how the government, they're supposed to be separate from each other. And they're supposed to be allowed to do their jobs. But now they've been engulfed into a system that they're all together. And they're after anybody that bucks. Who's ever seen any one man be persecuted and hated like the former president, Donald Trump? Amen. That's right. They got him indicted again. It's the third time they've indicted him. But all the evil that Biden and his son and all those have done, they should be the one tried for treason. They should have been tried for treason. But they're trying to destroy the man that God used to turn the nation around. It was God. It wasn't Donald Trump, but God used him. And y'all heard the Lord told us back when it looked like it was nowhere close to possible. Anybody else could go in but Hillary. God said, no, I'm going to put a man in office like under Ronald Reagan. He didn't say Donald Trump. A lot of times God just says like, and he leaves that rest open. Because sometimes we get in God's way and we start speaking a man's name ahead of time and it hinders what God wants to do. Just like John the Baptist was Elijah. Right. But the angel didn't say Elijah's coming. He said his name shall be called John. Right. <laughs> that truth was not revealed until Jesus was on the mountain. Of transfiguration. Yes. That's when that truth was revealed. John had done come and go. Come on. Sometime before it's revealed who something is. Because we want to know somebody by a name. God wants us to know him. Yes. God has put everything out here for us to know him. Yes. God uses man. God anoints man. 
but you can get too tied up in man. And God will remove that man and raise somebody else up. Because he wants you to know, look, I'm a jealous God. I'm God. I use him, but I'm God. You keep your eyes on me. You hear my word because I'm speaking through his mouth. But he's not God. I'm God. That's where the downfall has been many times. Because God used a man mightily. They begin to worship him. And then you've got some that invites to worship. Their damnation will be quick and swift. You don't get in God's way and try to get his glory. You almost got to dispose of yourself. To please God. But man gets in the pulpit when God gives him his heartbeat, right. his breath to breathe, yeah. and struck like a bandy rooster, like he's something. Come on. The Bible said when a man thinks himself to be something, he is nothing. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Come on. He's nothing. It's God to be God. Yeah. Yeah. It Paul. Preached there and he said, Not many wise men, not many noble men after the first are called. God I don't have to have your importance. Come on now. You're a great movie star, you're a great singer. God don't need that nobility. He's got his own nobility. All God has to do is reach out to a nobody. You ain't even got to know his name. Put his anointing on him and the marine that this time everybody would try to be getting to where he is. They want to hear the word from God. They want his hand laid on their head because God raised them up and God put his spirit in him. All of these men, all of these men, all of these men did these great works because of God. God alone. James said that Elijah was a man like passion, as we are. And it's hard to look at Elijah like us, but he was. He was just like us. He was a man anointed and called of God. See, we can't see it on this level. We can never see God using us Come on. on that level. Yeah. He's going to use somebody. He's going to use somebody. These are not the only men of God that's ever lived. God has still got people around the world that got the same word, the same God. Not many wise men, not many noble men are called. Why? You know, I saw preachers go get one of these stars and put them on the pulpit. And draw crowds with it. I mean, God don't need no singer, a movie star, to draw a crowd. That's right. When the next day they're back out there in the hell hole doing the same old evil, making the same old evil movies, or singing the same old yeah. evil perverted song. Yeah. God don't need one side of man; He wants all of man. Amen. I saw. I was watching one time and this, this, this country singer, I guess he was big back when I saw that, he got saved and I believe the man had really got saved because he got on one of programs and telling how God had saved him. He quit singing that old music, barroom music. He was singing gospel music and that preacher, that preacher that was in the view and said, oh, oh, brother, that's all right. It's okay. You can sing your country songs. You can sing your... Gospel songs too. You don't have to quit doing that. And he had just testified God had saved me. That was his conviction. But I guess the preacher didn't have none. And I thought, dear God, he stole that man back out to the woods. When God had convicted him and saved him. Let me tell you something. You don't need the world to have joy. 
you don't need the world's resources to have peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Our Lord and Savior is our keeper. He's our peacemaker. The greatest peace you can have is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Not many wise men, not many noble men. After the flesh are called. Presidents, governors, great people, people renowned. Because God knows that people will come to hear or see those people because of what they used to be, not what they are now. And let me tell you, God can give us what we are now to draw people Amen. and not what we were. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Not many wise men, not many noble men after the flesh are called. But God has chosen the foolish thing. <laughs> foolish thing. Amen. To confound the wise. Things that are not. To bring to naught. Things that are permanent things. Why, Lord, did you do it this way? He said that no flesh may glory in my presence. Amen. If we're seeking for self glory, self honor, praise, we're in the wrong place. Amen. He gets all the glory. Amen. We honor one another. We love one another. Amen. We give one another double honor that, that labor in the gospel. Amen. But we praise God. We don't Amen. praise man. He's our God, not man. Amen. He gets the glory. Because at the end of the way, after all we said and done, if we ever done anything right or good, it's because of what he did at Calvary. The blood he shed and the transformation it brought in our lives. The redemption of our soul. Amen. The redeeming of our soul is what the blood of Jesus brought to us. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. For God is highly exalted him, giving him a name. This, giving him a name. That's above every name. Once you get to the name of Jesus, don't look no farther. Just look straight at it. Because there's no name above his name. Paul said we're complete. This is where you're made complete. You found the place that your completion will come to pass. It's when you set your eyes on Jesus. And his holy word. Like I said a while ago, they're trying to get rid of his old King James. You know, God's been telling us wonders a long time. They'll buy you up some. And they started, see, they, they start the tactics in one state and it spreads. All these ungodly governors, these antichrist governors that jumps from one state to the other. They started somewhere and they started like a low profile. We won't alarm too many people, but it's coming to do away with this old King James Bible. They said it's too offensive. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Too offensive. Yeah. That's what they say. That's what the state said. The the government government the state said is too offensive. So we're not going to let you have it no more. We're not going to let you teach it to your children anymore. The real bottom line, we're trying to transform your children. We're trying to transform this nation. We're trying to hand it over to the Antichrist. We're trying to hand it over to our enemies. And you know when a, when a, when a nation takes over, what the first thing they do is install a puppet president. We got one. China has got her puppet president. He's handing this nation over as we speak 
to Red China. Little by little, they've even got police stations. And they brought it up. Some of, some of the people brought it up. And the, the, the cabinet of the president acted like they didn't know. China, you don't know? But all of our resources, the most modern in all history, you mean you don't know that China's setting up police stations in our country? Yeah, they knew it. You better believe they knew it. That's just part of it. There's a plan, folks. I heard this other day on, on the radio station, two young men was reading a list. Now, I'm going to try to get that list and make up some copies if I can get to them. But they had a list that was written in 1961. And they read that list on their program. And I'm telling you, folks, it's happening just like they wrote the list in 1961. Each thing they did was written on that. And if people read and look at it, it make a lot of folks look like a fool. How did I fall into that? When it wasn't me they was concerned about, it was the agenda and the way they was taking the country. Amen. Amen. He knows it. And this ain't the first. Go back to Jeremiah. Look at the false prophets, how they try. And the false prophets is right in with them. They're bending to this homosexuality. They're bending to this transgender spirit. Preachers in the pulpit are keeping silent. They're allowing them to come in and be members. When in the Bible, they didn't even suffer them to live. They didn't even let strangers inside the gate. Our borders is open. When Israel had walls and they didn't let strangers inside them walls. They wouldn't take a chance for someone to bring a false god in them walls. It was a pure place. It was a place that God had chose. And they were afraid it would bring judgment on Israel. I and mean, it did when they allowed it to happen. And that's what's happening to America. You know, America, God allowed it to become a nation like he did. And I've said this, and I know it probably not agree with a lot of folks around the world if they could hear it. But he didn't, he didn't bring this nation together like he did and establish it as a nation. For everybody to bring their false gods. People run from false gods to this nation to worship the one God. Yes. Amen. That's why America's foundation and all through the years we've, we've been so blessed. Blessed more blessed than all the nations of the world. And we're still blessed. Yes, we are. But we're like the Titanic. We're sinking because of the evil. And They said the Titanic, you can't see. But God heard. Yes. And knows there's nothing that God can't do. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? But they're bringing all this evil. And a ship can only hold so much water. Until right. she starts sinking. A nation can only hold so much evil. Until she starts going down. But there's one thing that can save us, folks. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. I may sound like old. No. It's all right, brother. Come on. Better get in. It's fishing the rain. Better get in. I heard the Lord say this morning, tell them they better get in. And this is what he said. You better get in for your protection. Amen. Let God protect you. Amen. Don't run astray and expect God to run out there and follow you Amen. and protect you. Right. Yeah. Where the water couldn't destroy was inside the ark, not outside. Amen. Not wait till the door shut and enjoy the pleasures of sin as long as you can. And then I'll run before the ramp in time you make it there. Coming up the hill, you hear the door click. 
and you hear thunder. My God. You make it up the hill and you look and the door is shut. All hope is gone to be saved. All the cry. I may sound like old Noah, but I'm telling you this morning, you better get in with all your heart. Get in, folks. It's fixing the rain. God ain't going to let this kind of evil go on. That's going on in this nation. He ain't going to be, he's going to, he's going to, he's already coming out against you. There's going to be some harsh, harsh judgment against this. This is totally against God's word. And it's come to the point even preachers are, are, are sanctioning it. You know, the Catholic Church used to be the hardest ones against it. These evil. But now, you know, that last pope they had, he wouldn't bend with them. They put him out. He didn't stay in, but they were, he said he retired. They retired. They run him out. But he ain't allowed to say, but he did. They tell me he did write a book before he died. But they wouldn't let him. They put him out because he wouldn't go along with this homosexual and marriage and abortion. But they went and installed one that would. They found out before they put him in there, he would go along with it. So they installed him. And now the Catholic Church, big bunch of them about to split, and the uh, uh, Methodist Church is split, the Presbyterian Church. And this preacher right out here, I don't know, somebody said they, they come out of the organization. But anyhow, I know one fellow that was in there, Right uh, here on this John Johnson Road, going around seven chapter. So he got up and said, I just want to let y'all know we're going to have to start letting homosexual evangelists come in here and run revivals. One man, his family stood up and said, not me and my family. They walked out. And they tell me, I hadn't heard somebody told me they had pulled out of it. They all turned against it. And I said, that's wonderful. They can go on with God, you know. Amen. You can't, you can't. Because the government are controlling these main big organizations. They, they are have installed their puppets. They're controlling them. Yeah. And, but thank God there's, there's people standing up across this nation. Yes. There are people standing up across this nation. And I, I, I plead to you today, let us stand up. Let us stand up for Jesus. Our job is, our greatest weapon is Prayer on our knees. Can you say, man? If my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn in their wicked ways. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes the trouble sees. Sometimes it takes a desert. Is to get a hold of me. Oh, your love is so much stronger. Whatever troubles me, sometimes it takes a mountain to make me trust you and me. Help me sing it. Sometimes it troubles me. Oh, sometimes it takes a desert just to get a hold of me. Yes, it does.
face now, yes. even in the airports, and you don't know who's studying you anymore, you don't know who's pulled you up and checking you out, you never know no more, but I know that God, I want y'all to all come up, if you will, and just stand around here, we're going to pray for his safety, that God will keep him and use him, yes. praise God, that we're using for his glory, heavenly, heavenly Father, we gather around our brother today. Thank you for your love and kindness. Tender mercy. We trust you. We believe you. And Lord, we know that there's many evils out there. In this country, Lord, Lord, in other countries, there's evil, evil, evil also. We pray, Lord, that you watch over him. You protect him. You anoint him in the name of the Lord Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over him to be careful of the power. Lord, getting on that plane in the air, traveling, just being in another country, just walking. And about his work, we ask your protection. We pray that you bring him back safely, keep his family safe, much over them also. And depend upon him, Lord. You are our greatest refuge. We pray for your protection, we pray for your power to go with him, Lord, and protect him. 
Watch over me and bring him back with a testimony of Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you, Lord, right now. We give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we ask you to use him. Use him for your glory. Use him for your glory. As many in darkness, especially in these other countries, you know what to do. You said, he that when his souls is wise, give him that wisdom of God to win his souls. In Jesus' name. Amen.